The important structures of the ankle include bones, joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. The top of the foot is referred to as the dorsal surface. The sole of the foot is the plantar surface. The outside of the ankle is referred to as the lateral side. The bony bump on the lateral side is called the lateral malleolus. The inside of the ankle is referred to as the medial side. The bony bump on the medial side is called the medial malleolus. The ankle joint is formed by the connection of three bones, the talus, the tibia, and the fibula. The top of the talus fits inside a socket that is formed by the lower ends of the tibia and the fibula. The bottom of the talus sits on the calcaneus, the bone that makes up the heel. The talus works like a hinge inside the ankle socket to allow your foot to move up, called dorsiflexion, and down, called plantar flexion. The ankle socket is sometimes referred to as the mortise of the ankle because the structure of the ankle joint is similar to a joint used in woodworking called a mortise and tenon joint. It has been used by craftsmen for centuries to create strong, sturdy connections in furniture and buildings. Inside the ankle joint, the bones are covered with a slick material called articular cartilage. Articular cartilage is the material that allows the bones to move smoothly against one another in the joints of the body. The cartilage lining is about one quarter of an inch thick in most joints that carry body weight, such as the ankle, hip, or knee. It is soft enough to allow for shock absorption, but tough enough to last a lifetime, as long as it is not injured. Ligaments and tendons are soft tissues that attach bones to other bones and muscles to bones. The difference between ligaments and tendons is that ligaments attach bones to other bones and tendons attach muscles to bones. Both of these structures are made up of small fibers of a material called collagen. The collagen fibers are bundled together to form a rope-like structure. Ligaments and tendons come in many different sizes and shapes. The thickness of a ligament or tendon determines its strength. Ligaments on both sides of the ankle joint help hold the bones together and stabilize the ankle. Three ligaments make up the lateral ligament complex. These include the anterior talofibular ligament, the calcaneofibular ligament, and the posterior talofibular ligament. A group of ligaments, together called the deltoid ligament, support the medial side of the ankle. Ligaments are also important in connecting the distal tibia and distal fibula at the lower end of the leg where it forms the ankle mortise. This connection and the collection of ligaments that support it are called the ankle syndesmosis. Three main ligaments form the syndesmosis. The anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament connects the tibia to the fibula and crosses above the front of the ankle. The posterior fibular ligaments connect the tibia and fibula behind the ankle joint. These ligaments include the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament and the transverse ligament. The interosseous ligament lies immediately between the tibia and fibula. Interosseous means between bones. The interosseous ligament is a long sheet of connective tissue that connects the entire length of the tibia and fibula from the knee to the ankle. The ligaments that surround the ankle joint help form part of the joint capsule. The joint capsule is a watertight sac that forms around all joints. It is made up of the ligaments around the joint and the soft tissues between the ligaments that fill in the gaps and form the sac. Several muscles and tendons are important for ankle joint function. The large Achilles tendon is the most important tendon for walking, running, and jumping. It attaches the two calf muscles, the gastrocnemius and the soleus, to the calcaneus and allows us to raise up on our toes. The posterior tibial tendon attaches the posterior tibialis muscle in the calf to the underside of the foot. This tendon helps support the arch and allows us to turn the foot inward. The anterior tibial tendon attaches the anterior tibialis muscle to the foot and allows us to raise the foot. The two perineal tendons run behind the lateral malleolus and help turn the foot down and out. These two muscles and their tendons are called the perineus longus and the perineus brevis. As you might guess by the name, the perineus brevis is the shorter of the two and attaches to the base of the fifth metatarsal, 
while the perineus longus runs further before attaching under the foot. The nerve supply of the ankle is from nerves that pass by the ankle on their way into the foot. The large posterior tibial nerve runs behind the medial malleolus and into the foot to control the muscles in the sole of the foot. The deep perineal nerve crosses in front of the ankle on its way to the top of the foot. Multiple branches of the superficial perineal nerve cross along the outer edge of the ankle. The nerves on the front and outer edge of the ankle control the muscles in this area and they give sensation to the top and outside edge of the foot. The ankle gets blood supply from nearby arteries that pass by the ankle on their way to the foot. There are two main arteries that cross the ankle. The dorsalis pedis artery runs in front of the ankle to the top of the foot. You can feel the pulse where this artery runs in the middle of the top of the foot. Another large artery, called the posterior tibial artery, runs behind the medial malleolus. It sends smaller blood vessels to the inside edge of the ankle joint. You can feel the pulse where this artery runs behind the medial malleolus. So now you have a basic understanding of the important parts of the ankle. This information should help you better understand the conditions and injuries that affect the ankle and the treatment recommendations suggested by your healthcare provider.